Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Flash Forward here on YesNetwork.com. I'm Chris Sheeran, and joining me as always is John Flaherty, Yes Network announcer and former New York Yankee catcher. John, welcome. Thank you, Chris. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? I'm great. All right. Before we flash forward, as it were, let's flash back to that Mets series, an exciting one, depending on if you're a Yankee or a Mets fan. If you're a Yankee fan, it was very exciting. And they should have gotten the sweep if you look at it. They just lose to Fernando Nieve to the Mets in the middle game of the series. But that drop by Castillo in the Friday game and the Sunday game against Santana was just a shock. Right, John? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it's one of those series that you, you look forward to. And on paper, it looked like... Uh, the Mets would have the advantage in that Sunday game with Santana, but his stuff is a little uh, short right now, and the Yankees took advantage of that. But, you know, they got a huge gift that Friday night, and I really thought that game took some pressure off the Yankees after losing three up in Boston. Uh, coming back, losing that Friday night against the Mets would have been devastating. So they got a gift. And they were able to take two out of three in the series, and now they look forward. Well, the gift was a big, uh, a big thing for the Yankees, and also beating Santana after you said getting swept in Boston. The Yankees needed something to jumpstart them again, and how big is that? Beating Santana would that can that get them propelled into this national series next and really get them going? Well, I think so, and especially uh, the off day on Monday, the Yankees enjoy that, and then you look forward to three against the Nationals and. You know, let's be honest, uh, the Nationals are not very good, probably the worst team in baseball. Uh, they don't pitch very well. They make a lot of errors. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of power. So it's one of those series that, um, you know, the Yankees look forward to, to picking up three games if they can. Uh, but, I, Chris, I played on some bad teams in Tampa. And I'll tell you what, when you come into New York and you play the Yankees, uh, you get a little extra adrenaline, and a little extra excitement, and, and you know the Yankees are going to have to be ready. They can't take these three games lightly. Well, Johan Santana gave up a career-high nine runs against the Yankees on Sunday. Chen Ming Wong can't have another one of those outings when he takes the hill on Wednesday against the Nats. What do we need from Chen Ming Wong? I know they're going to take him out of the rotation if he doesn't have another good start, John. So what does he have to do here? Well, you know what, Chris? I, I actually don't really agree with the way uh, Joe Girardi and the Yankees are handling this thing. Uh, you know, I worked the games up in Boston, and I saw the stuff that Chin Ming Wong had. You know, he had really good velocity, he had really good sync, and he had trouble commanding it. He couldn't locate the ball, you know, over the plate and get ahead in the count. But that being said, it was his only, only his second start back, uh, you know, off from uh, when he was in the bullpen. So you've got to give him some time to get back. And I think uh, the Yankees and Joe Girardi, you've got to kind of have that big picture uh, feel with Chin Ming and that. You know, you look forward to getting him right and be a little bit patient now because you're going to have a guy, uh, as long as the stuff is still in the mid-90s with that good movement, he's going to be dominating at the end of the year. So, uh, you know, hopefully he'll get off to a good start uh, against the Nationals and, and you'll see that confidence rise. Well, Wong's wife just gave birth to a baby boy, uh, Justin Jesse, so he could forget about sleep for a while, as both you and I know that. But <laughs> should, that, uh, should that help him out, maybe, you know, turn his season around? He has a nice little healthy baby boy, get him going again? Well, you know what, Chris, and you know this when you have a child, uh, you know, the baseball becomes, uh, it's not the priority anymore. And for a guy who's struggling like he has, you know, it gives him something else to concentrate on when he gets home. Uh, you get to enjoy your newborn child. You know, you take care of your wife. And you put the struggles on the field behind you, hopefully it'll be a nice distraction for him. But like I said, I, I, I just hope he gets off to a good start because I really believe he's one start away from uh, gaining some confidence or regaining some confidence and really being a big uh, part of the second half of the season. Well, one thing's for sure. When he's on the road, he'll be getting full night's sleep. And when he comes home, he definitely won't be. Now let's move on to Jabba Chamberlain. This is a weekly thing for us. His last start was against the Mets on that Friday night. And uh, just four innings, 100 pitches, he walked five, he hit two. Just the difference between a starter and a reliever with this guy, it's like night and day, and you just kind of wonder when the Yankees are going to make the switch, if they can, if Juan gets back into this rotation and starts pitching well. Yeah, you know, you wonder, uh, you know, you hear Chin Ming Wong, his spot in the rotation is in jeopardy. You wonder when Jabba Chamberlain is going to start hearing the same type things. Uh, you know, Phil Hughes waiting in the bullpen, waiting for another opportunity to crack that rotation. Uh, you and I have talked about it's no secret how I feel about Jabba, that he, I think he should be in the bullpen. If you, if you look forward with Brian Bruni coming back, Jabba Chamberlain, if he moves to the bullpen, Mariano at the end, now all of a sudden you feel really good about the second half of these ball games. But 
you know what, it's a constant. Every week we talk about it. You know, it's like Jabba has a good start, then it goes away, and then he has a bad start, and you start talking about the bullpen again. So we'll see how he does. I just think sooner or later he's going to be in the bullpen. Well, see, the thing that gets me is everybody throws these statistics at me with these little acronyms and, the, you know, the WAR. I don't even know what half of them mean. All I know is that the Yankees are built to win right now, and, just what I think is the Yankees are better suited if someone else could get into that starting rotation and be a little bit more consistent, i.e. Phil Hughes or Chen Ming Wong. I just think they're a better team, and the game becomes six innings with Jabba in that bullpen. That's a great point, and you know what? You could throw those stats out the window, Chris, because you know when Jabba was coming out of the bullpen, he was an intimidating presence. I mean, the opposing manager... You thought differently about managing a game in the middle because you knew you had Jabba coming out of the pen followed by Mariano. Now when Jabba is just a piece of the rotation, he's lost that, that intimidation factor. Uh, you know, you go into a series facing Jabba Chamberlain and you're not really, you know, you're concerned you're going to have to do well if he's on. But if not, he's going to walk a lot. The pitch count's going to be high. He's going to be out of the game in the middle of the game anyway, and you're going to be facing the Yankee bullpen. So I think he's lost the intimidation factor since he's gone to the rotation. He will gain it back if he pitches late in the ball game because that stuff will get better. I think you'll see his focus better for that one inning where he just you know can let it all fly in one inning, and he'll get that intimidation back. Well, you know, I, I brought up the little acronyms that I really don't know. I know what ERA is. I know what wins and losses are. And I know what saves are, you know. And that's really the only thing you really need to worry about because I'm talking to a former major league catcher here. So let, let me just put all these stats to rest right now, Flash. When you were a catcher, did you worry about anything else but the advanced scouting? Did you actually look at these little stats that they compiled? Did that tell you anything when you were playing major league baseball? No, the only stat that I paid attention to was whether my batting average was over 200 or under 200. Uh, you know, you know about that hitting under the Mendoza line, so I don't have to tell you about it. But you know what the bottom line, Chris, and you said it, in New York it's all about wins, and the Yankees are built to win this year. So uh, you have to put the pieces uh, to the puzzle the way they needed to be uh, set up to win games this year. And I think Jabba pitching out of the pen is the best thing for the Yankees. You have to excuse me. I just had to get on my soapbox and vent there a little bit. <laughs> I took a little hammering in my blog. And, you know, I, 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 you know, the Irish and the Italians start to mix, and then it's all over. So you brought up the Nationals already. So let's talk about the Marlins. The Yankees have the Nats and the Marlins coming up here this next week. What can we expect out of the fish? They started out fast, but have sloughed off a little bit lately. Yeah, they got it. They got off to a good start. Everybody was excited, but you know, with young players, you you don't know how it's going to translate over the course of 162 games. Uh, I always feel, Chris, in these interleague games, that the advanced scouts really become important because you know the Yankees don't know a whole lot about the Nationals. They don't know a whole lot about the Marlins. There's not a lot of history there, so you really want to make sure you have good reports going in that your team is prepared. That you can get off to a good start in the series the first night. So that you'll get some, uh, you know, you get to look at these guys a little bit that first night. You want to get off to a good start and then finish up the series. All right, Flash, uh, the godfather of YesNetwork.com, that would be Joe Oriema. We just want to send him a nice little honeymoon wish. He was married on Friday, so do you have any words for Mr. Oriema? Uh, just enjoy his honeymoon in Aruba and don't pay attention to Yankee baseball and hopefully they'll have a good nine or ten days while he's away and make him a happy guy after his marriage. Well, hopefully he could uh, he could uh, see some highlights down there. I know when I was on my honeymoon in Mexico, I didn't see too much. It was just ESPN Deportes and I had to get through the soccer before I got to the baseball. I was struggling. John Flaherty, you're at the track, you're at the wall. See ya. See you, Chris.